You're listening to The Long Game Podcast. I'm your host, Sandra Scaiano. Community, it's an important element in the business landscape. It's a place to connect, to share expertise, to forge relationships. And we all know the value of community in our businesses for conversations, for support, for camaraderie, and yes, for sales as well. We build communities and we are members of communities. And I've been thinking a lot about how to further build community in my own business. You know, to be honest, it's something that I've struggled with, partly because of my own preconceived notions of what a community should look like and how those notions aren't what I want to create. So I've been digging into the concept of community and I've been exploring different ideas and seeing what options are out there for myself for a long time now. And today I am sharing some of those ideas with you. It's an overview of sorts. You know, in fact, today's episode is going to kick off a series of deep dives into community ideas. And we're going to do this over a period of time. But hopefully you'll be turned on to a way to build community that works for you and your business. The long game is building community in our businesses. In a world where everyone is doing, it's easy to get lost in a sea of comparison, secret tricks, and promises of overnight success. The long game? That's my approach to business. You gotta show up, you gotta do the work, and there are no quick fixes for long-term success. It takes creativity, it takes strategy, and it takes listening to the voice inside you. I'm a web designer, digital strategist, and energetic thinker, bringing you real-world business-building experiences, conversations with creators who are out there doing it now, and ideas to spark the energy in your own business. And along the way, we're going to have a little bit of fun as well. So thanks for being here, and let's get to today's episode. As humans, we seek community as part of our survival instinct. Historically, humans have come together in groups to work together for the entire group's survival. And for individual members of groups, this group membership equates to personal survival. In modern times, though, our need for community has expanded beyond physical survival to include also emotional well-being and health. But Some of these same survival instinct ideas translate to today. You know, our being in business communities is where we share information about what's working and what's not. We share tools and how-tos and problem-solve in groups. And for the individual, group membership can equate to ideas and support that help their businesses grow and, in some cases, survive. So building a community... A type of audience is something that we all work to cultivate. You know, we all take our stabs at it on social media. Some make it seem easier and some are much more successful at it than others. (laughs) And, you know, we have our Facebook and our network groups. The conversation, you know, it's happening there for a percentage of people who are seeing the posts and who are engaging with the post content. But, you know, you're not in control of that. And these are the norms that we've become accustomed to. But how do we build community that's different than those norms? Are social media and these groups the only way? You know, what can we build that allows for engagement, that allows for conversation? And I've really been thinking about this for over a year now. (laughs) You know, what can I do for my business to increase my connection and community? Like, that's a question I've been struggling with, you know, and along the way, I've had a number of ideas. Some have even involved creating a thing. And I have bounced these ideas off my business friends who were like, we love that idea. Do it, right? You know, all the while, though, I kept podcasting weekly and sending my weekly emails. And, you know, those are things that I enjoy doing. Those are things that are community for me. And it's like, I was looking so long for something that I already have, but I would like to grow the communication, you know, the back and forth. So I've now shifted my own search to things that support how I'm already operating, right? Yes, I have started listening to my own advice. Build from what you have and from what is unique to your business. 
But all of this looking about really got me thinking. It got my gears turning about what's out there, what's new, what's different. And, you know, is that a good fit for me? You know, it might be a good fit for you too. I've really been exploring what are the options out there. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. You know, kind of create this overview of what are the options in terms of building community for your business. So first, I just want to reiterate that the basis of any community is a shared something, right? Like a shared interest, a shared locale, a shared mission. You know, it's a reminder that we are bringing people into our community who want to hear from us, who want to hear our expertise, who want what we offer, or who like the ideas that we have and like the conversations that we initiate. No one is for everyone. And there is no wrong answer for how you go about finding, attracting, and connecting with your people. All right. So we all know the big ones, social media. It's the big way to connect and build community. The Facebooks, the Instagrams of the world, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, right? These all operate pretty much the same. You know, produce, post content, hashtag it, and build a following. And the more it's viewed, the more it's shared, their algorithm will work to expand that reach. Some people just have a knack for it. That quick wit and writing engaging posts, like they just know how to do that. It's a whole ecosystem succeeding on social media. You know, you've got to be up for the shifts that happen with the algorithm. And some people, they really work the DMs and some, they've really got a knack for video. You know, I know I personally could be doing better in all of these areas on any of these platforms, but you know, it takes a focused effort. You know, and I dabble in my efforts with social media and, you know, at different times I have put in a more concerted effort, but for me, it just hasn't stuck. And really that's the same with groups. Like I'm in the presence of some people who they really know how to run a social media group. You know, they know how to get engagement. They are creating engaging content. You know, and I love to be a part of watching them work their magic. I also love being in groups that other people have created where there's all sorts of different conversations going on and people sharing ideas, you know, and that can be in Facebook or Mighty Networks and Circle. You know, there is an art though to creating a healthy and engaged group. You know, you've got to want to do it, first of all. <laughs> um, I don't. You know, and it comes with its own set of issues. How do you get people off the big platforms to your custom one? How do you keep engagement in the group going? You know, and as the group grows, moderation needs have to be addressed. Like who is helping you maintain the workings of the group? Entrepreneurs are heading conversations on more varied platforms now. So that's pretty cool. Places like Slack, which lets you segment conversations by topic, and Discord. You know, Discord started out as a platform for gamers, and now it can even be an easier place to connect than traditional social media. You know, it, there you create your own server, as it's called, and you host your conversations there. And I just saw a post from a band promoting a Q&A that they are hosting on Discord, like direct connection with the audience right there. And I think one thing to think about here is who is your audience and where are they, right? Like, are, do they have they ever even heard of Discord? Are, you, you know, there's that education piece. I know a lot of these conversations happened around when the mighty networks and circles of the world came out and you know, there is a learning curve to get people, number one, get them over to the platform, but get them using the platform, whereas people are just on Facebook and it's easier, right? So something to think about in your group when you're creating groups. All right, Patreon. I want to talk about this platform. You know, it is a platform that allows you to create community around your content. It allows for comments and conversations, and the platform is very popular with creators and podcasters. I'm in one Patreon group and I love it, you know, but from what I've learned, it can really be a big commitment for creators and podcasters because Patreon is usually you're hosting some type of content or bonus content. So as a podcaster, you can have people join your Patreon, but you have bonus episodes or 
bonus content over there. So you're actually now creating more content than you already are. So you've got to factor that in of what's going on over there. But it's cool because it's kind of like a mini membership site. You can have different levels and people can join for $5 a month and get access. And for a higher level, they can have different access to you and to your content. You know, what I like about these platforms, though, are like the ability for these freer conversations. And I really think that's the draw. You know, you moderate your own community. So you're in charge of the vibe there. And for some creators who address topics that might be policed more on traditional social media, the ability to speak freely with your audience is really appealing. You know, and these communities are there for the building. And ultimately, you've just got to decide if you are a run a group type of person. All right, so let's move on to longer forms of content in terms of writing and audio and video and some of the spaces that you can express your ideas. Okay, so you can build a community around the expression of your ideas and expertise. And we are all familiar with how growing a YouTube channel can be a community builder, right? You can create content for your business There's video comments that are the feedback and the conversation, and you can even now live stream with um, YouTube. And then with audio content, podcasting, you know, it is a great community builder. One that I myself had to really wrap my head around, you know, even after doing this for two plus years, you know, yes, people listen and they hear my ideas and the conversations that I'm bringing forth. And I love this, but I always felt like, It needed another piece to be a community, you know, and I've really started to rethink that now, you know, much like the audience of a, any popular TV show is a community around the shared experience of watching the show and following the plot lines and the characters, you know, my podcast has a community around my listeners and they take my episodes People share them and tag me on social. You know, people send me emails and response and, you know, people tell me in person that they are listening and that it has an impact on them. So I had to let go of what I thought community had to look like and see what type of community I have really built. And email marketing is community building in such a big way. Again, I had to come into my own with this. You know, it felt like, at one point that I was just reaching out. But again, I had to reframe my thinking. People are letting me into their inbox, which is such a private space. And, you know, as I stayed consistent with my messages, my open rates have steadily increased. And to me, that is confirmation of community. So the podcast coupled with my weekly emails That allows me the space to do all the things that communities in other forums do, but in my own way. You know, showing up weekly, showing up in the audio, in the inbox, like definitely has people engaged in a conversation with me. You know, now I'm also going back to some ideas I had about integrating the fun and the personality into my emails so that my audience can get to know me better, not just have the email be one subject anymore. So if you aren't getting my emails, hop on over to sandrasky.com and sign up. All right, there has been a vigor in other long form platforms in recent years as well. You know, those who love to write can be on platforms like Medium and Substack. And these are both growing in popularity because there are built in audiences on the platforms. So I've had a medium premium account for about a year now. And what's cool is like, I have told the platform the types of articles that I like to read. And I get these curated emails with articles to peruse, you know, I'm then able to follow people that I've discovered, you know, people who I like their voice, who I've been introduced to through this curated email that gets sent. And commenting is built in and there is a lot of engagement on some of these articles. And Substack is another long-form writing platform, and it has of late become a haven for different journalists and pop culture type people who have been let go from their traditional media. 
And, you know, this has given them a place for their voice as of late. You know, and there are writers from all walks of life there. And both with Medium and Substack, there are paid membership opportunities here. So writers can also earn a living by posting on these platforms as well. And Substack has been going out and even seeking out people and creating content deals with them to write on that platform so that they're drawing in certain personalities. So that's kind of cool too. And like the paydays are like multiple six figures for some of these people. They're getting content deals. But you don't have to be a writer or a journalist to make use of these platforms. So for instance, on Medium, I have started to write posts on the topics of my podcast. You know, it is a place for me to repurpose the content that I create in audio and in video form. And I'll link to my Medium page in the show notes so that you can follow me there and see how I'm developing my presence. And, you know, just by posting, I mean, you post it and it gets put out there and someone follows you, right? So that's how you build there. And another, I wanted to talk about this, unsuspecting place to build community is on Amazon Live. Have you guys checked this out yet? Have you checked any of this, this video space out? Because it's really interesting. Amazon Live is a place where people live stream about products that are available on Amazon. So if you've got a niche or products that you like to recommend for your business, this can be a great place to build a following. You know, basically you set up a live stream and you are pitching products um, the whole time. You know, people can follow you and they can leave comments on your live stream in real time and you can answer questions, things like that. And of course, you are earning a commission on products purchased that you recommend. And this could be a really great complement to a community building strategy because like you are showing people the products they need to be successful in what you do. There are a ton of people who just get on there kind of like influencer based and are like, this is the best vacuum ever and talk about it. And they're just personality based and building communities and followers. So it's definitely something to check out and just see if you can add that in. And I would be remiss not to talk about these two community building ideas, you know, although they are not platforms in the software sense of the word, they give you a platform to connect with others and build community. And I'm talking about speaking and in-person events. And these two go hand in hand as, uh, you know, many in-person events have a speaking component to them. But this is where with both of these concepts where you can connect in the flesh. You know, if you are speaking, you know, there are so many ways to infuse community building into your presentation. I mean, number one, just be stellar and people will follow you, right? But you have slide options. There's QR code options. You can leave things on the seats for your attendees, depending on how things are set up. And also how big is it? If it's a small networking type speaking event, you know, People can come up to you afterward where you can connect in person with them. And when you host or attend an in-person event, you know, this really is opening you up to meet new people and bridge virtual, bridge virtual connections to something more, right? The value in in in-person, that can also really be felt in consistency. So, you know, if there's a networking group and you show up consistently, you know, that allows you to the time to get to know people and people to get to know you and what your expertise is and what you bring to the group as well. So a lot of community building and connections there. All right, so the concept of community is really what you think of it and what you make of it for yourself. Like. How you choose to go about building community and developing it, it has to feel right for you. And sometimes we just need to alter how we're viewing what we already do. So going forward, I will be inviting experts in these different community platforms to come onto the show and dig deep with us on the benefits and uses for community building on those platforms. So, you know, the conversation is really one that is ever evolving, just as these platforms do. 
But I would love to hear what you all are using to build community for your business. So you can drop me a DM on social or email me at hello at sandrasky.com, S-K-Y, and let me know. All right, everyone. So good to talk. Have a great week. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more information, links mentioned in this episode, and the show notes at thelonggamepodcast.net. If today's show connected with you in some way, please share it with your friends or hop on and leave a review. Both of these make a really big difference. All right, until next time, keep playing the long game.